So there's James's breakfast for this morning. It's a few uh, pulp patty burgers on these little um, uh, buns, I guess. And there's some lettuce and tomatoes and avocado. And um, some of those um, sweet um, preserved onions that I make. Um, I think I showed how to make them some fall. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And uh, we're having lettuce juice with ginger and turmeric this morning and ginger and I'm having an apple after that. So I guess I'll get that over with and then I'm going to talk about the third disc of this ancient civilizations of North America which I'm quite enjoying. find that if, um, if it's a cold day, it's good to heat up uh, a bean bag or um, a hot water bottle and take it with you, just put it under your shirt or whatever. Canadians spend way too much time inside. It's better to be outside. Get some fresh air, or as fresh as we can get it. And this morning the birds are very happy, so you get to enjoy bird songs, which is wonderful. I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I pickle, or well, it's not really pickling, I suppose, I preserve, um, my onions, I make them a, with a wine, uh, with these ones I used, a uh, cream sherry, and, um, uh, they taste amazing, and coconut oil, quite a lot of coconut oil, so I don't eat them myself, even though they're delicious, and I, I brought a bunch to my mom and, and they're just like, you just put a little bit. But she said, she said to me, oh, those onions are wonderful. Just if you mix them just with rice. And I thought, how much are you eating? <laughs> because that's a lot of coconut oil. But I'm glad she enjoyed them. Anyway, so uh, the third DVD of the series I didn't enjoy quite as much and so honestly my notes are not going to be um, as easy to make out because I didn't I just wrote while he was talking and I wasn't pausing and stuff so so if you're interested at all watch the DVD or whatever and and look into the stuff for yourself because you're not going to get a whole lot from me. It might be choppy kind of data and not, I might not have written it down correctly or whatever, right? Because I, I wasn't as interested. So, um, but one thing you learn very important at the beginning of, uh, or near the beginning of this third DVD is you learn why you should not call anyone Anasazi. So that is why we do not use that anymore. Um, by 750 BC, they live more like how we recognize Pueblo people with uh, Kivas. Pueblo II period, people lived at peak of their civilization. They had many homes, Kivas roads, but droughts forced migrations. Mongolon, Mong Mongolon? from pit to above houses 900 C. Before then, they had ramps. Um, Mimbres pottery pottery with kill holes on top. Hohokam was the first divergent culture. They extended irrigation canals off rivers. They had an above ground structure with floor dug down. Hohokam had a lot of trade with neighbors. By 1300s, Hohokam cities abandoned due to drought. Pueblo moved into their land. Uh, lecture 15, 
He uses virtually so often that I find it tough to trust what he's saying. But you know what? That's fine because whatever I learn from other people, I'm going to look up before I trust it anyway and try to figure it out for myself. Flexible twigs and fibers used uh, coiled together to make baskets. Oh, I was going to bring out. I have one of those baskets of this type, but I didn't bring it out. Sorry. Um, but they're the ones that spiral around. Anyway. Uh, I think they look nice. Um, women were on average five foot tall, men five foot three inches tall, so they're not really huge. Um, men, a little bit shorter than me. Women wore butterfly hairdos like Princess Leia. Um, pit houses with ladder in roof to get in. Farmland and a central kiva. Basket maker three. Pleasantville stockades around domestic uh, dog turkey theory um, versus defensive theory. After 750 CE, basket maker evolved into ancestral Pueblo. Lecture 16, Mogollon pottery, black on white bowls with detailed varied art. Bowl on head of almost every Mogollon body they found. Bowl had hole in it. Mogollon 5 to uh, was around 1000 CE. Mogollon had pottery from 200 BC, before their neighbors. They had better pit houses too. Their pit houses became rectangular rather than round. A hundred pit houses around multiple kivas in large villages. A thousand CE above ground Pueblo blocks used. Mogollon kivas remained rectangular. Matox rooms built accretionally. The outer rooms built on it built on in ways that changed the new inner rooms. Classic Members, people across the region buried their dead inside the floors of the rooms, often in what were once storage pits. At Matox burials were mm, at Matox burials were in the inner rooms, but not in the newest exterior rooms. They didn't paint geometric designs. Well, they did a little bit, uh, but it, um, not exclusively. And it was it was just a part of the art. So um, they actually made art. Their pottery looked lovely. Um, they painted animals and people in scenes doing things and they had expressions on their faces that looked really great. I, I, I loved it. Most bowls were used for cooking and eating before they became hats for dead people. So who knows, that bowl might have been that person's um, bowl that they used for eating and then shoot, when they died. Who knows. Uh, butterfly fish is a common image so is scarlet macaw. These show range of people or knowledge of species gained through travel and trade. And it seems pretty obvious that, um, I mean, they had, they had a lot of influence that seemed like they were like people in, um, further south, not the people right around them. So anyway, we'll get into that. Um, Membres burned kivas and left in 1350 CE. They moved east to the Rio Grande area. Open central plazas became popular instead of enclosed, enclosed kivas. Lecture 17. The Hohokan masters of the desert. They started as part-time farming of flood areas. Then they dug irrigation canals. They were also desert Hohokams who used there were uh, desert turtle cooks who used rainwater catchment and wells instead. They farmed on ash from a nearby erupted volcano. Villages shared communal ovens. They didn't build kivas. They did have, didn't have any communal areas until later pioneer period. Then they built platform something and ball courts. Um, I couldn't make out what the platform things were. Looking at them, I don't, I don't know, honestly. Um, Casa Grande has astronomical alignments. Casa Grande water house. James thinks they're a colony from Chile or something. I think all of their trade occurred by traveling by boat along the coast. Like he had a map and he was showing their um, route that they probably took on land. And it's like, why? 
it's way easier to float if you're going to haul things and and trade i mean you look at historically anybody who was big into trade they used bows right it just makes sense so why would you why would you go across land when you could go just go to the water and then doop, boats makes more sense anyway um I doubt that all the residents live there full time. Honestly, James is like, oh, they might. Have. I'm like, no, I doubt it. You know, oh, you yeah. have sidewalk farmers here. Uh, sidewalk farmers, that's a term that people use for people who have farms, like big amounts of land that they farm, but they actually, they live in the city. So, um, anyway. Now, I mean, you would need more people there when canals are being dug and to harvest, stuff like that. You, But I don't know why you would maintain the villages full of people in these areas when you're not doing that. I, I mean, it's tough living in the desert, right? So if, even if you're using it to uh, grow your food or whatever, maybe, should we? I don't know. Um, because honestly, if, if you're a person, if you're somebody who is trading and you have your boats that you're trading with, then um, why wouldn't you use the boats and fish off the coast or live, you know, a much easier existence than in the desert most of the time, right? Anyway, um, it seems strange to me that these um, people that, I mean, the... Pahokam were obviously quite different from their neighbors and but they didn't seem to be fighting. There was one point where Pueblo took over someone else's territory eventually so I don't know if the people who had that territory left before and then the Pueblo took it over or if it was more aggressive kind of takeover. I don't know but they seemed really peaceful compared to what we were seeing earlier. So, uh, James says farmers seem to be more pacific than pastoral nomads, um, and that these guys didn't do well once the Navajo pastoral moved in, nomads moved in. Uh, Kachina Kiva used 1250 C, women only allowed to enter to serve food, they were underground. Great Kivas were huge and not covered, the smaller ones had roof at ground level and ladder to climb down into it. Um, and I think we're talking about the Pueblo now. Blue painted door. I don't know though. Um, to ward off the evil spirits. Uh, sun temple on Mesa. Sunset craters, volcano ash. Elite people lived in cliff dwellings, possibly. Um, drought resistant corn planted on Mesa and proved they could get crops even today. So that, um, I can't remember, it was university or something did that just to check it out see if it worked out and they did get crops um, the people didn't change location and then all of a sudden by 1275 they were vacating and by 1300 they were gone entirely so that's that's the third disc for you anything to say about that third disc James you said you brought up what I mm. just said mm -hmm. mm. Are you thought of something mm -hmm. Not important, really. But with James's burgers, I was trying to get this in the yard. That's funny. <laughs> so you you didn't want your avocado? Oh, it just Not fell off. Not after it hit the floor. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I was gonna put these. We finally we've been going to the food bank for how long now, James? Over a year. Yeah. And um, this is the first time we were given cheese. And so I was gonna put cheese on James's burgers, but I just brought them out and he can eat them just whenever he wants to. But, cause I stacked his burgers really high and I'm like, well, he's not gonna be able to hold all of that stuff on the burger and then get it in his mouth with the cheese. So, yeah. Anyway, maybe I'll say about the, the guys. Seems like a nice guy. Mm. Um, quite knowledgeable, mm -hmm. but uh, most of interpretation, his interpretations seem to be wrong-headed. Mm -hmm. so. 
but they tend to be um, what archaeologists. It's typical, but it's mm -hmm. something like people typical like James and I can learn a lot from people like him. Sure. Because he knows a lot about, um, like with James. James has this, he has a map of, you could ask him, you could be in Canada anywhere, and you could ask him, who whose land was this originally? Who, who was on this land? He'd know. He'd be able to tell you. He'd be able to rattle off some blah 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 for a couple hours so you get him interested to some this guy he knows all that he knows where you know the maps of where people were what people were there and where they went to all that sort of thing so he he has that knowledge which is awesome um and i mean just to know about various cultures and be able to say oh this culture was different from this culture and that you know these are not we can't just call them all native and you know and say okay well the natives were like this well the, some were like this some were like that some so it's good to know right and he knows all that so anyway you can learn a lot from that but things like his um he obviously doesn't know very much about things like irrigation or something like that right and so when he's talking about that mm, he doesn't know uh so he gets off topic and there's some things like um language james knows language a lot so when um he was explaining at the beginning when um edwin barnhart was explaining at the beginning uh why it's not really appropriate or we should consider possibly a different dating system because to use um bc and ad might be offensive to some people he was thinking the ad part was offensive and can you explain that no oh. He was saying, A.D. means the year of our Lord, Anno Domini. So Anno is, it's kind of, did he say in the year of our Lord? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of like uh, Anno. Uh, I think it's in the tablet of case, which is indicating what, in the year. And then, Domini would come from Dominus. Domini is the uh, genitive case, which uh, can be interpreted in a variety of ways, but usually is of. But uh, it doesn't have our in there. It just says in the year of Lord. It doesn't even say the Lord or a Lord. Right? You could interpret it as our Lord just as well as you could the Lord. So, uh, no. Originally, it would have meant something like the Lord, but it definitely I mean, our Lord. Well, you can go with a charitable reading of our Lord. So, so if anything, people should find the BC offensive. We just the uh, Jews because, because, sorry. No, you go ahead. Christ means Messiah. It's Greek for Messiah, and the Messiah is a Jewish concept, right? It means the Anointed One. I guess it would have been inherited from the tradition of anointing dudes like Saul, king of uh, Israel. So uh, David was anointed, I presume by, was it Samuel, was he still alive? But Saul, his predecessor, was anointed, as I recall, by Samuel, the judge. It's just a sign of kingship, uh, Jewish kingship. So, you know, that would be, in, but it shouldn't be. Uh, offensive to anyone else, really. Um, and Jews, I think, tend to be, well, they do prefer CE and BCE, Common Era, and stuff like that. But, um, and they're welcome to use that. But I don't think anyone else is obliged to mm -hmm. use it. Um, Uh, it's just like putting zero on the number line. Yeah, where you put zero is is uh, arbitrary. So who cares? You know, no one's saying you have to convert to Christianity or anything like that. Anyway, 
I don't find BC and AD offensive. I... I'm, uh, I'm a, I'm a, an agnostic and an atheist uh, about any conception of God that's ever come down. I don't find it offensive. Who cares? It doesn't really matter. Uh, you could take the BC and AD right off of there and just call it minus and plus. <laughs> and it's fine. I don't care. Mm. But I mean, the whole system of having, where was it that date somebody wanted to start in 1950 is the... Well, that's what they do. I don't know why they do it. It's stupid. It's stupid. <laughs> For uh, carbon 14 reading. It should be 2000. I mean, yeah, they started at about 1948, carbon 14 dating. So 1950. That's stupid. Anyway, but I'm enjoying the series. I just didn't enjoy that one as much because I'm not really into anthropology sort of stuff, and the third disc was more like that, I think. That's the thing. But um, the second one, the second one was very interesting for me. The first one I found kind of boring too. But I mean, still good, still a great course. Worth watching. And how's your burger? It's good enough. It's got kale. Kale. Yeah. Kale patties. But you put a lot of stuff in there. To I tried to liven it up. Uh-huh. Anyway. And sauerkraut. <laughs> the idea with kale is actually to liven it down. Yeah. And you did. So. Yeah. We just distract you. Yeah, you have to distract from the flavor of kale. Which is tough. Because it's kale. Mm-hmm. Even when it's a pulp patty, you can still taste it. Don't worry about it falling, it's fine. Well, my I'll, you can it. leave it there. Well, 